People often say, Cliff, you got to understand, people of different religions and different cultures have put together their own religions that have brought their lives fulfillment and peace. People have built great civilizations. Therefore, when you claim that Jesus Christ is the only way to God, that is so intolerant, so exclusive, it's unacceptable. Friends, it's not me who claims that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Jesus claimed that. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ insisted that He really is God. You see, when someone says all religions are equally valid, they're saying one of two things. They're saying that either God does not really exist, and religion is just the creation of human beings, which means all religions are equally valid, or else they're saying God is an impersonal force. And therefore, because God is an impersonal force, it really doesn't matter what you believe. But if Jesus is correct that God really loves you and loves me, then that means that God is not an it. God is not an impersonal force. God is a personal being. If you love me and if I love you, that means there are two personal beings engaged in a personal relationship. Now, if your name is Fred and I call you Tom or Philip or Harry, that is highly disrespectful and it will lead to a disconnect. Similarly, if God is really Jesus Christ, then for me to reject Christ and accept some other religion is to disconnect with God. The Bible records in Genesis chapter 3 how we human beings have indeed disconnected from God. We've gotten unconnected. The message of Jesus Christ is that God wants to reconnect. God wants to live in a personal spiritual relationship with you and with me. That is why putting our faith in Jesus Christ is so important. God does not treat you as if you were somebody else. He knows you by name. And so God says, know me by name. God does not consider you expendable. He doesn't consider you replaceable. Instead, He loves the real you. And so God says, please love the real me. God has a particular special care for you, Jesus insisted. And therefore, God says, learn to love the real me. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. God is a real personal individual, and your neighbor is a real personal individual. Individuality must be respected, for if it's not respected, you can't have a relationship, because all of us are individuals with unique personality, with unique values. The same is true of God. God is not an impersonal force. God is not the creation of a fertile human mind. Instead, God is the eternal personal being who has existed throughout eternity. He loves you and He loves me, and He's revealed Himself most clearly by becoming man in Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, we read how Peter stood up before the Jewish ruling body and said, Salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Ouch! There's that awkward word, saved. When does a person need to be saved? When they're drowning in a hurricane. When does a person need to be saved? When they're dying of cancer. When does a person need to be saved? When they're in a real jam and they can't save themselves. They need an outside person to intervene and to help them. That is exactly what Jesus Christ did. He's the eternal, personal God, a very real God, intervening in human history. Jesus lived a sinless life. He didn't sin once. In John chapter 8, He could look into the faces of His enemies and ask them, which one of you can prove me guilty of sin? And His enemies were silent. Not only did He live a sinless life, He taught amazing ethical teachings. Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Read them for yourself. They're the Sermon on the Mount, an amazing ethical treatise by an ethical genius, Jesus of Nazareth. His teachings make sense. Thirdly, observe how He dies on a cross. At the moment of His most excruciating pain and agony, He doesn't curse His enemies. 
he prays, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But fourthly and most importantly, three days after he died, he physically bodily rose from the dead. He's alive today. He's not an it. He is a he, a personal God who loves you, who's good, and who will ultimately judge all of us. He died on a cross to pay the just penalty we deserve for our cosmic treason, for our rebellion against God. Isn't it time for you to ask Christ to forgive you for your wrongdoing, to put your faith and trust in Him, to respond to His love, His amazing grace by trusting in Jesus Christ and to receive from Him the gift, the free gift of eternal life that He promises to all who trust in Him. God bless you as you make that most important decision.